So this is from a tweet. That's kind of cool, I like it. Um, anyway, some states close prisons. PA is building new ones. What reforms do you support to reduce the state prison population? And I actually mixed up the order before, so Dan, you started last time, right? So Mr. Wagner, why don't you start? One of the fastest growing costs of state government is the correctional system. I've toured the correctional system. I was a state senator. Uh, I know that the population of the system has increased dramatically uh, in the last 30 years. It's because of the legislation that, that has passed that has incarcerated more people. What we have to do, though, is be smarter in terms of how we manage our prison system. Uh, we have nonviolent offenders within our prison system. We have to find ways to utilize modern technology, uh, especially with nonviolent offenders. And I'll give you an example. We did an audit of the Board of Probation and Parole. Uh, and offenders, uh, Megan's Law offenders, and we've done an audit of Megan's Law to enhance the website that protects primarily women and children against sexually violent predators. But at Eventually, people are released from prison, and there is a cost association associated with probation. We are not utilizing modern technology, GPS systems, ankle bracelets to track people. State government is behind the times. That's one way in which we can reduce the cost of operating our prison system and keep a better track of people who are a, a repeat offenders and end, end up back in our prison system. The incorporation of modern technology, rather than simply housing prisoners, is a way to go in the future. Thank you. Mr. Gardner. Yes, uh, obviously the first thing you want to do about is education. You want to be able, we talked about it earlier, uh, how if you invest in people's lives, at the beginning of their life, you save a lot of money at the end of their life. If you educate people, they become productive citizens, they become people who create jobs, they become people who respect one another. You know, as Mayor Scranton out of prison, it was six blocks from my downtown. And I think Jack brings up a good point. You have to be more innovative. There are a lot of people we use who work for these programs that I use in our city. The ankle bracelet program is also a very good program. These are programs that would reduce our costs on the short term. But in the long term, we need to invest in ourselves. We need to invest in education, to build productive citizens, people that will create jobs, will create more tax revenue. It allows us to invest in ourselves. And in doing that, it's less expensive and will reduce the cost of prisons, which is really the worst thing you can say they have as a state that is growing. Mr. Pennsylvania has uh, too many mandatory minimum sentences for non bad
recidivism rate. We have an aggressive program. We do extensive interviewing for anybody who leaves the jail. We try to find out what is the environment that this person is going back into. Will that environment increase the likelihood of moving back to this building in a few weeks or a few months or a few years? And if the environment, it appears that the environment will send them back to us, we do everything in our, our power to make sure they don't go into that environment. It could be a job. It could be where they need to stay. It could be with to relocate them somewhere. So we use the Department of Human Service, the director from the Department of Human Service in the county, the ward, the director of the health department. We reduced recidivism rate almost 40% in the last three years. Uh, it's a program that we've shared with many counties around the, the country. Uh, so in addition to the suggestions you heard, <coughs> uh, reducing recidivism rate and, and paying attention to people leaving the prison, and what we all talked about an hour ago, keep investing in early childhood. Let's put the money on the front end, not the back end. Okay, thank you. Thank you.